All right, so uh, fossil record review questions right here. Question number one. Richard Dawkins once said, if there was a single rabbit or hippo in the Precambrian, that would completely blow evolution out of the water. None have ever been found. Is this a valid point? Why or why not? So the thing with this one is, just to, to answer the question right away, it is not a valid point. And the reason for that is because when we look at the fossil record, it is true we have not found a rabbit or a hippo in Precambrian rock. Um, that, would, that, would have, that would mean that we found a fossil that's 500 million years out of place. But we've actually found other fossils that are out of place by longer time than that. Um, if you remember the example with Angel Falls, um, I think it's the Roraima Formation in Venezuela. So that has pollen in, in those rock layers, and they're off by over a billion years. So it's correct. No, we have not found rabbits or hippos in Precambrian rock, but we found other things that are even further off as far as the evolutionary timeline is concerned. Uh, beyond that, we've also found uh, vertebrae in rock that's supposedly 500 million years old, and they shouldn't have evolved until much later than that. And the problem, it, when, you just, when you continue to push back these complicated animals like vertebrae, animals with, with uh, spines, then that leaves a lot less time for invertebrates to actually come about and form and evolve. So you can't just keep pushing back all these complex creatures, even though we keep finding them further and further back in the rock record, almost as though they just appeared and were made that way. Um, but yeah, so it is not a valid point uh, for those reasons. Number two, science says the fossils we find took millions of years to form. The Bible would say they formed quickly as a result of Noah's flood. How does the mere presence of fossils directly point to Noah's flood and catastrophic burial? So the thing behind this is we're finding fossils of land animals all over the whole world. And in order for something to become fossilized, you need two things to happen very quickly. You need that animal to be covered very quickly by both water and sediment. You need the sediment to keep those bones and, and, and that creature from being scavenged because even if uh, even if it's covered very uh, quickly, if it's not covered completely with sediment, uh, you'll have scavenging take place. And not just, you know, the, the flesh and the muscle being eaten away, uh, microbial decay will occur too until the bones are completely gone. So you need that to happen extremely fast. So the sediment protects the creature from being uh, scavenged. The water then, the minerals from the water, deposit themselves on the bone and, you know, eventually the bone is completely mineralized. That's what a fossil is. That's the permineralization process. Both of those need to happen extremely quickly so that these creatures do not dissolve away. And basically what you need is you need flood-like conditions for that to happen, to be covered by both of those at the same time very rapidly. So then the thing is, we're finding land animals fossilized all over the whole world, everywhere, literally. So if you need a flood for that to happen, then what you have to say in the secular world is that there were local floods at all these individual locations all across the world when obviously the answer that would make a lot more sense is there was one massive watery catastrophe that laid them all down at the same time. And that's what Noah's flood is all about. Number three, what are living fossils? Do they make the theory of evolution more or less believable? Living fossils are uh, creatures that are actually alive, walking around today, that look the exact same as their supposed ancestors from supposedly 500 or so million years ago. And uh, that, just to give you an idea of reference here, you know, just in Wisconsin, there are so many examples of these that I'm just to talk about the ones that were found in Wisconsin, we found jellyfish, we found scorpions that look the exact same today as the fossils that we found from supposedly about 500 million years ago. And remember, dinosaurs went extinct like 65 million years ago. So the fact that we're finding, uh, you know, these scorpions walking around that looks, look the exact same, um, that would be like even more unlikely than finding a stegosaurus walking around in your backyard because they were just around only 70 million years ago or something. And yet we see, we see scorpions look the same from hundreds of millions of years ago. So uh, this makes evolution very not believable. 
because over those hundreds of millions of years, you supposedly had all these mass extinction events. The Permian extinction, which you know got rid of supposedly 95% of the species that were in the world at that time. And then you had the extinction event that uh, supposedly got rid of the dinosaurs, along with 75% of the species that were left. You know That would have a huge impact on the climate. So much so that these creatures would have had to have adapted to those different climatological conditions. So there's no way they could stay the exact same over hundreds of millions of years when the entire world is changing around them. Yeah, they might not have had to adjust themselves for predatory conditions, but when your whole climate is changing, you have to change along with it or you're going to be dead. So these living fossils point directly to this timeline being fiction. Number four, all popular ape men of the past have been discredited. What are the main mistakes scientists make when they put forth these claims? So uh, obviously we went through a lot of these examples. Every, in the scientific community, it's assumed that there is some missing link between humans and an ape-like creature. And everybody wants to be the person to find those bones. Because if you do, fame and fortune are yours. You never have to worry about another thing in your whole life if you're the person to discover that. So what happens then is if you're an anthropologist looking for these bones, every bone you pick up sort of becomes uh, the bone of a hominid, you know, the, the bone of a creature that was an ape human ancestor. So the main mistakes they make when they're doing this is overactive imaginations, overall lack of evidence. Remember, one of these examples was just they, they created this image of an ape-like human thing out of the tooth of what ended up being a pig. So lots of, lots of lack of evidence, overactive imagination, and of course fraud and forgery are huge too. There was that one example that took 41 years in a deathbed confession before people realized that it wasn't even real. And, uh, of course, in museums, they do a lot of dishonest things too, right? Where they have human eyes and, and an ape-like face and human teeth in an ape face. And that's what gives you those crazy, eerie images. They're not based on reality. Number four, is there any direct evidence that dinosaurs have been around a lot more recently than 65 million years ago? This is a, a two-part question here, so I'm just going to start with the first one. Obviously, the answer is yes. That's probably what we spent most of the time talking about here. You know, when we, when we dissolve away the mineral from these dinosaur bones, we're finding intact DNA. We're finding blood cells and blood vessels. We're finding muscle fibers that are still stretchy. These things are organic. They cannot last for 65 million years. They can't last for 1 million years. That they break down very quickly over time, especially in the tropical conditions that these dinosaurs would have thrived in. So they point exactly in the direction of dinosaurs having been around a lot more recently, exactly in line with the biblical timeline. In addition to that, when we look at cultures all across the world, from these ancient cultures, we see murals and tapestries. We see carvings and drawings and paintings and sculptures of these monstrous creatures, which look exactly like the dinosaurs we see in the, in the fossil record. And from the, the, one of the carvings that looks like a sauropod, remember, we, we also know that they have good posture in their drawings. So uh, this can't just be a coincidence. The representations are too close to reality. They had to have seen these creatures themselves to get that level of accuracy. So whether you're looking at physical evidence or historical evidence, it points directly to these creatures having been around a lot more recently, exactly in line with what scripture tells us. Remember, humans and dinosaurs were made on the same day, day six of creation. They would have been on the ark, they would have come off the ark along with Noah and his family, and they would have existed in the same world for at least a while after that. Uh, in the next chapter in the geologic record, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened to the dinosaurs and why they might not be here right now, why they aren't here right now. And finally, what are some explanations as to why we don't find humans and dinosaurs together in the fossil record? You could kind of answer this in a couple of different ways. Remember, humans being God's crowning achievement, the, the, um, the you know, crown jewel of his creation, uh, we are the most intelligent, the most sophisticated of all of God's creatures. And so when the floodwaters came, we would have had a much easier time uh, trying to figure out how to get away from those floodwaters. So humans would have, in general, lasted longer than the animals. So when you get to higher ground then, uh, you're going to be 
overcome by those waters at the end of the flood as opposed to the beginning. And therefore, any humans that were fossilized, that were uh, deposited in the you know, last layers that were laid down as a result of Noah's flood, those would have been the topmost layers. So eventually, when the waters got to their maximum peak, so humans are, would be in the topmost layers, those waters had to go somewhere. And when you have that massive quantity of water running off the land and into the ocean basins, it's going to take a lot of those top layers with it. Uh, that's what erosion is all about. So the layers that would have had the human fossils were probably just eroded into the oceans. Uh, but beyond that, we got to realize uh, the generation times of humans is a lot longer than animals. There were a lot less humans around at the time of the flood than animals. Um, in terms of uh, estimates, uh, the estimates are usually between 10,000 and several million humans were around at the time of the flood. So if you assume there were like 10 million humans and every single human was fossilized, then for every, for every, forget what the number is, it's like if you consider all the fossilized layers and all the rocks over the world that were laid down as a result of the flood, there would be like one human skeleton on average for every like 17 kilometers or 17 miles or something like that. Every square, 17 square kilometers I think is what it was. So that's, that's a needle in a haystack if there ever was one. And that's probably why we don't see them fossilized together. You just, there weren't as many humans around and the humans that were around probably got fossilized in the last layers which were washed away into the oceans. So.